ho, 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 ho. What's up, everybody? My name is Russ with a uh, Ah, I'll just keep going because why not? My name is Russ with RWGResearch.com. Um, so check it out. I've been playing with nylon, and I wanted to give you guys kind of an overview uh, of what I've done and my experience with nylon um, or talium. Talium. Okay. So here's a lot of the uh, pieces and parts that I have managed to print out and it looks like a giant mess but uh, yeah I have printed out, tested, bent up, smashed, tried to break and um, different uh, temperatures printed out the calibration piece that's on Thingiverse and tried to break it um, lots of testing on my end on trying to get the actual filament to do its job so what have I learned and what can I help you with um, I originally had a problem with my the hot end that I uh, had on my 3D printer. A um, guy by the name of Jeff made it. Jeff made a really good hot end, sent it to me, and I asked him to make it for 1.75 millimeter because it originally was for 3 millimeter. This was like two years ago or longer. So um, when he made that modification, it worked great with ABS. It didn't really have any problems. Didn't notice any problems. Uh, but when I started printing with nylon. Um, the cavity inside the brass piece um, was actually, let's see if I can find it, no, it's on the printer. The, the cavity was actually three millimeters big, and what would happen is all of the nylon would get in there, it would get hot, swell up, and then it would just spew out both ends, and go. it would actually go backwards and get smashed inside the, uh, um, the back side of the hot end and cool off, and then get stuck. Big problem. Um, didn't have that problem with ABS, but nylon... It decided it wanted to uh, it decided it wanted to do that on me, so <clears throat> I decided I was going to build a new hot end. That's what I did. I built this really fancy dancy um, all metal hot end with uh, it has a bunch of air cooling. If it'll focus, it has a bunch of air cooling channels in there, and they run down the front. I put tape on there so the air would disperse on the last plate uh, as a trial and error thing. Then I've got a brass insert and uh, it even is loose back here as in the air comes back on the back side of this and tries to cool the tube. This unfortunately was a big flop and I have a whole other video on the hot end scenario. So that's a whole other video, I'll link it in the description. But as far as nylon is concerned, I had to, I, I ended up, finish the story real quick, I ended up um, putting basically the original hot end back together but instead of using the brass tube, which I didn't use the brass tube, it's in here somewhere, this bag of parts that I've played with to get it all done. Um, I did not use the brass tube, I ended up using a stainless one and, and drilled it out to the right diameter and then inserted a brass tube inside of that so that it had a really slick beautiful surface instead of my drilled surface and um, it seems to be working really 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 well. I still had to use a insulator um, of the peak, the original peak part that Jeff made, I used it and then I also um, went ahead and just um, inserted a piece of Teflon tubing down inside there to get it uh, to get it from uh, not making the entire length of the tube brass tube. Because what would happen? Let me explain to you what would happen when you push filament into here. It would swell up before it ever got to the hot end part, and it would get stuck. You could pull it back out because it would it would release its its strain and it would stretch. But when you were pushing it, it would swell and you just couldn't get it to go through the hot end no matter what you did you could not get it to go so I resolved all those problems and that took about two weeks of my own personal time to get all this worked out uh, and then I started printing with nylon and still could not get it to work because I could not get it to stick to the bed um, so in my previous video I posted I used a piece of this um, material here which is um, yeah I'll put it right here because I forgot the name already. Um, and this works pretty well. I did end up sanding it. I still had a few problems with this. If I printed a really big solid part, the edges still wanted to curl. So I need to do some uh, some testing and checking still yet with this. But for this part, um, here's like a nice finished one. For this part, this worked great. You can actually see, uh, you know, pretty right there. And uh, it's stuck on there great. It was just a ring. So no big deal. You can see I'm printing with uh, pretty fine details there. It's all white, so the contrast isn't all that great. But uh, but this turned out great. This is actually a gear 
for a, uh, uh, I think it's a Honda Matic or a something like that, very Matic, it's a Honda, but this is the gear for the front axle, um, it's a speedometer gear, and uh, the challenge for me actually was to build that, that's in a different video I will also link in the description. So, I tested all sorts of stuff. The funny thing is, is that I first printed this test piece with the original hot end, and I actually got it to work really well. I mean, it looks great. It turned out nice, and I'll be darned if that was the only thing I could get to print. I had problems after problems after problems. That's why I ended up deciding to do the hot end, because what would happen is this would actually jam up. Could not get any more filament to come out because it was swelling backwards in the hot end. And it just, I fought this, I thought this was the issue, and I fought it and fought it and fought it, but it was actually the hot end giving me the original problem. So, temperatures and all sorts of stuff I've been playing with to get it, uh, to get tested all these and got these, you know, different temperatures. And one thing, um, one thing I want to recommend really quickly before I forget is I have this nylon in the open. According to my research, nylon is extremely sensitive to moisture. It will just soak it up. And uh, I think I can tell when stuff gets soaked up because if you look, this doesn't look that nice. It's not clear. Let's see if I can get closer. It's not real clear. It's kind of white and fuzzy and I don't know what the real problem is there. But check this out. This is like solid. I couldn't even break this. I tried to bend this in half with pliers. Could not break it. You can see the difference right there. The first couple of layers are, uh, let's see if I can get it better over here maybe. Mm, maybe not. The first couple of layers are almost clear, and then the bottom layers, towards my thumb, are actually not. And I don't know really what the problem is. It's almost like there's a moisture content problem, but I also figured out that layer height, the thinner the layer, um, up to about 0 .6, 0 .06 millimeter, excuse me, um, up to that point, it actually, when you got down to that point, it would be clear. It would be like this. Look how good this gear looks. See how it's almost like a clearish? Um, and this one I printed at point oh, mm, was it this one? Yeah, I think it was this one. Point oh four eight seven five millimeter. Super, super thin. But it's really, really strong. Um, and some of these other ones are not, you can flex them a lot easier. So a side by side comparison here it is kind of hard to, to tell but you can see maybe you can't see but I can see a difference um, so anyway so what I've learned is um, that the layer height being thin actually worked better so if you make a layer height too thick it turns out like this where it's kind of white and fuzzy and if you make the layer height thin it turns out more solid like this and so I'm not sure if it's a it's it's a problem with my extruder, or if it's actually the layer height itself, or if it's the filament itself. I don't know. But here's what I'd recommend: take your filament, put it in a bucket, put a hole in the top of the bucket, and let it run out the top with like a rag or something to clean it as it comes out. Similar to what I got here. This is a little adapter that has a a rag inside of it that wipes the filament off before it goes into the extruder. Um, so if you do that, put a bunch of uh, moisture bags inside of your bucket or whatever you put this in and let it come out of the bucket and hopefully you won't have as much moisture problems and I think you'll have better prints. So that's a big lesson learned. Um, as far as temperature, I actually like running at a lower temperature because it makes nicer prints but it delaminates like this and I can actually pull the individual um, point 8 millimeter layer off of a layer off of a layer, which is pretty impressive that you can still peel it that thin. But you can. There's an example right there. See how thin it is? And so that is a, a lower temperature here. Too high of a temperature and uh, and you get something that uh, oh, I don't know where it is. You get something that basically um, wants to melt too much, but it sticks well. It seems to stick pretty well. Um, so here I actually went and tested each one of these. Again, that's in another video. And uh, I am actually thinking that around 238 to 242 C is a great temperature for my hot end. Now, every hot end is going to vary. Again, this one's rebuilt and different. So everybody's going to have a different, uh, a different opinion on what they like on their printer. You just have to test it. 
and it took me quite some time to get it right. But when you get it right, you can have something like this. This is actually one of these gears, and uh, I bent it completely backwards, again, in another video. Bent it completely backwards. <laughs> Let's put it up here. And I still couldn't get it to break. Could not get this stuff to break. And that's what you want. You don't want it to delaminate. It's not delaminating. Okay, it's staying together. But completely backwards. Um, so, mess around with it for a while and you'll eventually figure out what your printer works best. Now, what do I feel? How do I feel about nylon right now? I really like nylon, but nylon is very stringy. Here's an example of a print where the hot end uh, moved around a lot. And you can see all the strings. Now, unlike ABS, these strings are quite hard to just remove. Um, they're quite a pain in the butt. And um, ABS, you can kind of almost rub them off. Nylon, when you get stuff like this, it just doesn't. And then when you try to scrape it, it doesn't like scrape clean. Nylon is some weird stuff. I like nylon. This stuff's really great, I think, for making gears um, because this stuff is tough. ABS wants to um, wants to rub and grind, where this stuff, I, I think you could run this at full speed for a long time with no lubricant, and it would still be okay. It's nylon. So, um, yeah, I like nylon, but uh, I'm not going to be printing with it a whole lot. I think it'll use it for specialty items and uh, things like gears and uh, parts that I, I want to be flexible uh, but strong because, uh, for instance, the filament itself, the filament itself you almost can't break. This is 1.75, and I, I mean, even with pliers, you, there's no way you can break this. And uh, even a thin, a tiny thin little uh, one layer, one layer piece, I mean, you know, that stuff's even very tough. And I show in one of my, uh, one of my other videos, of course, I, I twisted one of these guys up, and it just, I mean, I couldn't break the stuff. It eventually snapped because of temperature, probably from all the stress. But, um, but this is good, good, good stuff. I really like it. Um, one other note, really quickly: speed. Um, I actually like running between 10 and 20 uh, millimeters per second, which is actually probably more like 20 to 30 on this printer because the way it's configured. Um, I like running it slow. It just makes better prints. I did run this thing at. 750% um, of speed and it was supposedly set at 10 millimeters a second and it ran and it printed and it worked. Um, that's that's one of these guys here. I believe it's that one because I popped the top off. I don't remember. But, uh, but it ran and it worked and it printed. Um, but when you run slow it seems just like it runs a lot better. And with the layer height, like I said earlier, with the layer height really really thin, um, too thin and you just get you start smearing around the plastic but if it's just the right thickness depending on your um, diameter of your hot end this particular brand new one is 0.35 millimeter my old one my original was 0.5 um, I don't know which one I like better yet I need to do more printing with it but um, basically the hot end will actually it'll lay down a thin layer but the hot end will kind of preheat the uh, plastic as it's moving around and it really bonds well. Like I said, I have I have one of these that's printed at that super fine um, and that's the actual one I used. This is a finished product that I used was a really really fine one and um, and it it just seems so much stronger. I think if you go too thin, um, like I said, you're smearing all the plastic around, it's it's it doesn't turn out as nice. That's the dilemma. Um, you can see the difference between these two okay believe it or not this one that looks like not that great you can see how it turned colors that's because it got too hot this one here actually was a little bit thinner layer or a thicker layer and it actually turned out better so too thin is bad and uh, and there's kind of like a little example but Anyway, I'm going to let you guys go with that. I just wanted to share my experience with nylon. Um, I would say if you've never printed with nylon, I say go for it. Make sure you get your bed surface figured out. Do your homework on what you need to put on your bed surface. It will not stick to hardly anything. And even the stuff they say it will stick to, still doesn't stick that great. 
Um, so you have to really, I guess, figure out your calibration. Um, I'm still going to be fighting that. It took me probably six months to get ABS calibrated really well on my printer. So, you know, messing around with this for only like three weeks now, um, in my spare time, of course, it's been a little challenging um, to actually achieve the proper results in that short amount of time. Um, I was in a hurry to get this gear done for um, the fellow. And, um, yeah, so I need more time to just sit down and mess with nylon, test print, test print, test print. Um, it doesn't seem to swell or shrink. It seems to be fine. And um, I guess that's it. I, I like nylon, but, uh, but it, it, has its, it has its challenges. Stringiness and sticking to bed. Worse than hot glue. Except hot glue is stickier than nylon. Nylon doesn't break like hot glue. Alright, peace out. God bless. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Check the description for more information on nylon. Okay? Alright. Peace out. Bye.